fiery with his ears. I've never heard that. I felt so bad. Like I woke this. up this morning, I see, like, at 6 o'clock, oh, Jay Groom got fired. Huh? Like, there's reports out, apparently. Yeah. I guess someone made a joke saying he came in with some donuts and told him you were fired right there. Yeah. <laughs> that is a crappy thing to do if somebody. If you tell him to come in It has fire. to be, like, the worst time to be fired is probably after a football game. But also... But at 5 a.m. to just to say, hey, oh, and you knew that Cook was coming in, so I don't know why they would actually. Well, in his, his presser after the game, he said, someone asked him about his job security, and he said, he said well, I, no one's told me anything yet, so I'm I'm not worried. And then not even 12 hours later. Yeah, I think so. I'm not even I can't. <laughs> I feel bad for the guy. but Nothing better than coach speak. Yeah. But you know what? Even though you might feel bad for him, I mean he ain't hurt. No, he gets he gets paid either way. He gets all his money. Yep. His you brother would probably pick him up. Yeah. Nice and robbery. He's getting burned. <laughs> <up. laughs> I don't know if you guys realize that. Did, 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 did y'all know down? At, we went down there to Miami. Did y'all know that they they cut the game off? Yeah. Like at the end. Yeah. And then and then as they were saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then they went to the other game, you know, and then they went back to, oh, they did put a second back on the clock. <laughs> like, oh, man. Burn up, you and Laser high-fiving each other in the press box now?
uh, getting to play at home. Uh, Rhode Island comes to town with two wide receivers that could play for about anybody in America. Quarterback that's thrown six touchdowns and no interceptions in the last two weeks or scoring points. Um, senior laden defense that continues to get better each and every week. So we've got a challenge for ourselves, our, our staff, our players to go get ready to try and uh, play well, try and, try and win this game. Questions? I watched a little bit of the replay, still going over some of it from the game on Saturday. Was that Brian Hudson's best game so far, do you think? Or are there some things that, that uh, were particularly alarming to you or that, that stood out to, about his play? Well, it was a big challenge, I can tell you. Uh, they're awfully good, particularly on the inside. The two defensive tackles or the three or four or five or six defensive tackles they've got are all, all really, really good players. So I'm proud of the progress Brian has made. He continues to get better. He's a highly intelligent, um, you know, kind of a, a savvy player, you know. So um, I'm, a, I'm anxious to see him continue to, to improve. But uh, he's certainly, in the last couple of weeks, and last week in particular, has taken strides in the right direction. <clears throat> players last week, Caleb Farley in particular, said, you know, mentioned the intensity of the practices coming out of that game. When you don't have a loss to sort of motivate, and maybe some of the criticism that was motivating the guys, is it hard to carry that over, do you think? It not? will not be. I can promise you that. We better practice like that on Tuesday. But did you see that on Sunday, too? I mean, what was that similar practice you had a week ago? Or yeah, we're not going back. We're not going back. Our team is not going back to go practice. Uh, laid back or any of that. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go coach the way that, and I've told our team this. Okay, like we had to get, we've got to get mentally, physically, and emotionally tougher. We've got to learn how to practice. So we Tuesday we're gonna roll out there, and it better look the same as last Tuesday. I can tell you that much. So are you pushing those buttons, or is it more the leaders, or are you have to get that ball? It's my job to get it done. Justin, defensively, it looked like the team played probably one of the best games of the year. What were some things that really stood out to you as far as the way the defense looked out there? Well, we created turnovers. I mean, we made plays on balls in the air, 50-50 balls. Um, obviously created pressure on the quarterback. Now, we gave up some plays, too. I mean, we gave up a Hail Mary at the end of the half. We um, tried to keep the ball in front of us. Um, in our drop eight stuff and didn't do a, a very good job of that at times. But um, we were playing a very explosive offense in terms of skill players. You know, one one step in the wrong direction is a big, big play. Um, particularly early on, I felt like we were really attacking and aggressive and putting them behind the chains. Sure. Yeah, I, I, the thing that I appreciate about him, and one of the many things I should say, is um, just his continued dedication to getting better. He had a great summer. I know we talk about that. So and so had a good summer, you know, that sort of stuff. But I'm talking about extra work. Um, Hendon put in a tremendous amount of work in his own free time um, to try and improve. I think it's really important to him. And um, I've just seen him take huge strides, and we still have a lot of work to go to do. I mean, he's played in one game. But, um, you know, he was able to have success in, in, in the game last week, not because of how he practiced last week, but for how – because of how he's worked over the last several years. And, um, you know, again, I've, I've kind of referenced, referenced this before with some of the other players, but it's really nice for us because we're behind the scenes with these guys all the time and we see the effort and the work that they put in. It's nice to see them get to, to reap the benefits of that. So um, has he learned, um, has he improved? In terms of under, overall understanding and uh, what's going on on the other side, yes, and he's put a lot of work into 
to making those strides. When you have a, a parent that's played a position like that, is that, do you notice that, that maybe you guys have a little more advancement coming in? Oh, I don't want to speak for Alan on this. Uh, Alan, uh, that's Hendon's dad. Um, Alan and Wendy have been very supportive of, of Hendon, but I've, I've always felt like it was all in proper balance, I guess. Like, I never really felt like – I may be wrong, but I never felt like – um, Alan was, was drilling him when he was, you know, as soon as he could walk and three step drops. I didn't feel, I never felt like that. I may be wrong, but, um, I just felt like they were very, uh, nurturing and supportive as he went through all his, you know, he was a good basketball player too, uh, all his athletic endeavors and kind of let Hendon, for lack of a better term, find his own way in what he was passionate about. I mentioned to Hendon after the game, the numbers might not bear this out, but it, it, it seemed like I mean, he was clutched down the stretch. He passed. He made big throws when he needed to make them. Um, and he was upset about making some overthrows, especially to Hazleton early on. Yeah. And I asked him to evaluate his own passing game, and he said, I, I thought I threw the ball terribly. I thought it was horrible. What, 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 what was sort of your assessment coming out of that, and did you, kind of, did you think the same thing? Well, what was it, 10 for 20? Right. So if you take 10 in completions, um, I'm not going to hit all 10 of them off the top of my head, but one he threw in the ground on a screen. I thought two were drops um, there on that drive in the, in the fourth quarter. Um, one, was an, one was an overthrow to Damon. One, I couldn't tell. Uh, we were trying to throw the ball to Damon again, and I couldn't tell if his arm got hit. The ball landed out of bounds. Um, you know, and there's a handful of others in there. I mean, he was pretty efficient with the ball. The ball was never in danger. One was a cruel route that I thought we you know, possibly could have had a pass interference call on third down. So, I mean, I, he was um, – could always be better. I know he missed a couple of throws, but he didn't miss 15. You know, like he did, certainly didn't miss 10. Um, you know, the challenge for him now will be can we make, can we make those plays and, you know, as he gets more comfortable, you know, and starts to handle the different looks from week to week and the third down pressures and that sort of stuff. One of the biggest plays of the game, I thought, was uh, third and long McLeese's run for a first down early, kind of got them out of their pressure looks and their because that stuff is a pain now, and uh, which gave him a little bit easier looks as the game went on. So I know I'm giving you a really long answer, but um, certainly had some things that he could do better. Um, but also was pretty judicious in his decision making. I thought he was going the right place with the ball. He never seemed rattled, and and all in all, played pretty efficiently. <clears throat> Coach uh, Oscar Bradburn, he's third in the nation in uh, average yards per punt. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him in a potential breakout season for him this year? Well, I think first of all, he, the two things that I think of with Oscar one is he is a competitive individual. Like he's. Um, you don't often think of it maybe when you think of punters that way, probably not fair, but, um, you know, he is into the game, he's into competition, he's into improvement. Uh, and the other thing is he made large gains in the weight room. I think, you know, his leg is strengthened over the last year and a half or so. And, uh, he's becoming a weapon for us. He's taken a lot of pride in that. Um, we're going to face good returners. We faced a really good returner last week. Uh, we'll continue to face good returners as we go through the season. Not getting too caught up in the numbers, but getting the ball up in the air is going to be important, and that's hard sometimes for players to think about, but uh, giving us a chance to, to, to cover, the, cover the kick without a return because of the hang time is going to be important as we move forward. Justin, when you change quarterbacks like you have mid-season, does that change the way you and the rest of the offensive coaching staff need to kind of look at how you call a game? Because two different players, two different skill sets, you want to obviously optimize what Hendon can do. Does that change the thought process for you guys? Well, I'd say you ch you certainly try to play to players' strengths. Um, so I don't know that there's wide sweeping changes in anything, but there's certainly tweaks and little things that you try and do a little bit differently in order to capitalize on what what each guy and particularly the quarterback's good at. We mentioned McLeese. Uh, he had a 
you know, another big run. I mean, and patience is what his what's been kind of the spark for him, kind of on the field that has able to enable him to kind of have some success in, in recent weeks. What well, I think see? it. You know, he's t- he's kind of gotten into the nuances of running the ball as opposed to just pouring it up in there. Um, he's taken to some of those things that we're asking him to do, and I think he's seeing some. You know, he's reaping some of the benefits of that. Certainly, part of it is his natural ability, but also part of it is getting a little more detailed and what we're asking those guys to do, and his ability to uh, interpret that information and put it put it out there for for everybody to see. I don't know if you saw it live, but it was pretty obvious from the replay that Alan Tisdale kind of like threw up on one play and then just dropped into coverage. Have you seen something like that? Have, have you played, been around a lot of football? Have you seen anybody in your career do that or have oh, you done it yourself at all? No, not me. Uh, I didn't play enough to actually throw up. Um, yeah, I've seen it before. When I was at Oklahoma, we were playing Syracuse and Donovan McNabb was the quarterback and they had the ball in the 50-yard line, and he was under center, and he just leaned over and threw up and then snapped the ball and probably threw a 50-yard touchdown pass on the next play. I don't remember. But, it, um, yeah, it happens. You know, what happens is those guys were on them so hard about hydrating that sometimes they drink too much water. It sits in their stomach, and they're out there active, and sometimes that happens. But, um, you know, Allen, um, you know, played more than he's played, too, and was really effective, did a really good job, really proud of of him and the improvement that he's had because of the type of game we found ourselves in, particularly in the second half, he was on the field um, quite a bit more and, and was really productive. With Hendon throughout the course of the game, or maybe some things that you saw from him that you can't even really teach that it's just natural instinct or it's just intangibles that he's out there doing? Well, I think the first thing is just, you know, his overall demeanor. You know, like his ability to stay focused on the next play and continue to try and execute whatever we're asking him to do, regardless of circumstance. I mean, there was a time in there where they had a whole bunch of momentum and the game was tight or tied or whatever. You guys saw the game where um, there's plenty of opportunity for a young guy to to panic or press. And he, he did not take those opportunities to do that. You know, he stayed focused and uh, continue to try and execute, which I think is, is pretty hard to teach somebody how to do that. <clears throat> Completely understanding that it's it's 28 nothing, and then it's 35-14 with, you know, seven minutes left, and they're in throwing mode. Um, the backup quarterback throws for over 400 yards, and uh, I might have missed a few plays uh, on that, that last uh, drive where you guys had to stand down there uh, near the goal line inside the 10. But was there, given the fact that they, that they'd surrendered seven sacks, was there any thought to, to, to blitzing on that last drive and kind of trying to, to harass them a little bit? Because I didn't, I didn't see any blitzes on that last drive. Oh, I can't remember if we did. We did create some pressure later in the game. I don't, to be honest with you, I can't remember 100% if we didn't pressure at all on the last drive. I know they hit the long pass. They completed one more pass of significance and had hands to the face. To me, that was the big sequence there. Like there wasn't a lot of opportunity. Um, you know, those two, it was really two plays plus a 15 yard penalty that really, really hurt us and got the ball down there. So, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation over the, over the headsets about, um, you know, what, both what coverage to play and, and, and what, what to do. But trying to keep the ball in front of us, we felt like was the best way to go. So a little bit played a lot, you know, and we played a lot. We played a lot of guys, but we played a lot of snaps too. In the moment, you got to just go play. But looking back on when they put the second on the clock, is that a play? And we've talked about things you said in the ACC. Is that something you want clarification on, or what do you see kind of from the replay of it? You know, now not having to actually just go play and not worry about it. Well, yeah, we like like I said, and I'm not we're not, I'm not gonna um, every week come in here and 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 put the officials on trial for what what has yeah we put the we turn those things in just to ask not to complain but just to ask like hey talk to us about how this is interpreted you know just like the targeting that was waved off just like you know several other plays of that were non-consequential in the game 
we send those in just to have those discussions. So, I mean, the bottom line is the the ball was snapped, and there there you know the the play should have ended with with one second left on the clock. I mean, that was the the interpretation is that it was it five seconds the first time the the play lasted four point six two seconds or whatever it was, and so there was either less than a second or a full second left for the for the next play. And then um, Manny Diaz, when he went for two, said after the game was analytics based that he kind of just had that was what he, you know Matt yeah. says. Is that how you approach those situations? No, or do you but do that's different? all right. No. no, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. How do you look? You know, similar situation. Right. Do you, do you, Statistically do you speaking, that that is correct. But you do. You don't look at. No, I'm not going to go for two right there. But that's just me. I'm just curious. I'm just yeah, curious. like, I'm but statist. No, I know. Statistically speaking, like that is the scenario that it, amongst coaches that always get that always get talked about, but I can't come to grips with that, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, when you got to go do – it's different if you're – you know, it's one thing to have the statistics. It's another thing to do the post-game press conference, right? And, um, you know, that – statistically, that is correct. And that's exa- – and when he went for it, I knew exactly what he was doing. But – you have numbers. It's just hard to Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not arguing against math either. Like I'm pretty sure I know five times three is fifteen, and it's gonna be fifteen forever. Okay, I understand that, but that's just that's one of the many scenarios that, in in my opinion, doesn't take real life into consideration. One more. Bud said after the game that plan is to redshirt Keyshawn Artis. Uh, kind of sounds like a Devin Hunter type deal where he's played a little bit and then another redshirt. Is there anybody else that, under consideration for that? I'm curious kind of how the conversations take place. Or something yeah, like we'll see. I mean, I don't – I don't like that's what we would like to do. I don't quite honestly know if we'll be able to do that with Keyshawn. Like, there's a lot of football left to be played, and um, we'd like to try to, to do that if we can, but that's – That's not taking into account a lot of things that could happen down the road. So um, we have a number of guy number of guys. I don't know that they're in exactly Keyshawn's place, but most are are, are younger guys that we're trying to manage that number f- for them and save them for the last four games when we're maybe more thin or find ways to alternate those guys through. But you know, Keyshawn is really the one that we've had the most conversation with. To try to do that, but you know, it's, it does. It does. You don't have to have a very big imagination to foresee a scenario where, you know, we're, we may not be able to do that. Was Deshaun Crawford able to avoid anything serious? I mean, he didn't up, he came back in the game. Yeah, he's avoided anything serious. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll have uh, some more folks tomorrow after practice. Thanks, sir. Yeah.